Next on BYUSN, traversing the BYU Sports Twitter verse over the last 24 hours. Does it mean good news? Elder! And where is BYU football benefited the most? Which side of the ball from the transfer port? Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, a official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Wednesday, May 3rd. I am Spencer Linton. He is social media investigator Jerem Jordan. We've got a lot to look at when it comes to what's going on in the socials. More on that coming up uh, on today's show. How do we interpret Keaton Slovis's tweet last night? <laughs> Elder! <laughs> it's like, what does that mean? We have some ideas. We'll tell you. Which side of the football has benefited most from the portal? Bronson Kafusi helps break it all down. And why flex seal and oversized portions of barbecue are in the whip. But first, a bit of news. BYU Sports Nation breaking news. Just in, BYU wide receiver Cody Epps has announced that he will return to BYU. Yeah. Entered into the transfer nice. portal. Nice. Now he's back. The sophomore receiver just making that announcement literally moments ago on social media. He shocked us on Sunday night saying that he was exploring other options. We felt Had like he was portal. gone. Yep. yep. I, w I was told he was basically gone. Now he's back. Here is the message from Cody. And I quote, Cougar Nation, I want you to know that BYU is the place that I love and where I want to be. This is all caps, by the way. It was a tough decision in the first place to enter the portal because I love BYU. Even though some great opportunities were presented to me in the portal, I did not use the portal as a way to leverage or test waters because I have too much respect for the generational connection I built here and Coach Kalani's belief in me. He continues, if anything, I have come to understand through all this that there was no point in trying to find a new home when what I needed and wanted was already here where I am. Mm. Cougar Nation, my teammates and coaches are who I love and who I want to play for. Plus, I have too many teammates' weddings that I couldn't miss <laughs> this summer. I'm here to stay. Now let's go show the Big 12 what them scoogs be about. Okay. I, I love it. Uh, I'm, I'm stoked. Let, let's break that down more in trending uh, coming up after today's headlines. Wow. Well, uh, the, the headline is Cody Epps, but yeah. as far in as, as in other news, BYU baseball, they lose to UC San Diego 3 to nothing. The Batcats fall to 18 and 24 on the season after being held scoreless for the first time all season. That's a good offense. Up next, West Coast Conference play continues. Massive series impacting the Cougars' WCC postseason chances. BYU will face San Diego and California. First pitch at 9 Eastern, game one of three. Women's soccer is in Austria. Beat FK Austria, Vienne Fraunen, 3-1 with goals from Ali Fryer and Brecken Mozingo and an own goal. The Cougars are playing as we speak in Salzburg against FC Bergheim Damen. And uh, the Cougars uh, had already scored a couple of goals. We'll uh, give you the update a bit later. BYU men's track and field slash cross country signs Tyler Sainsbury. The distance runner comes to BYU from Rocky Mountain High School in Meridian, Idaho. Sainsbury has won several major individual titles as a prep runner, including the mile at the Nike Jesuit Twilight Relays. Check that soccer playing at the top of the hour after the show. Oh, right. More on tomorrow. Uh, Michael Rucker pitched uh, two thirds of an inning for the Cubs last night, getting two ground outs and a loss to the Nationals in Bryce Harper's debut. And congratulations to BYU women's rugby, who have won the club national championship in a very unique fashion. They beat Stanford to win the West. Then after Virginia beat Florida, the Cavaliers opted not to travel and play in the national title game due to budgetary concerns. So the Cougars will take the trophy. It's being sent to them. Congrats to first year head coach Jared Whippy and all of those outstanding women. Yeah, kind of a weird situation there. BYU didn't know that was essentially for the national championship. Uh, certainly wished uh, Virginia was going to travel or Florida who lost maybe would sub in. They apparently didn't travel either. So BYU wins the national championship. There you go. Right. BYU is in the second level of women's rugby. They're hoping to go to that top level next year. Okay. This should help, right? <laughs> yeah, BYU is ready we for hope. it. We hope. BYU is ready for it. Yeah. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. He 
never left. <laughs> he never left. But he started a social media storm yes, that did. his quarterback, Keaton Slow, was added to. What's Trending, presented by Tim Daly Ford, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Well, and what we had planned is blown up. We just react to Cody Epson yes. because that's the bigness. Jerem, it's an epic return. Like anchor boy. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. Yeah, apologize to absolutely no one. To absolutely no one. <laughs> Cody Epps is back. Hey, that's this is great news. This is wow. great news. Um, certainly did not expect this a couple of days ago. Uh, Sunday night and Monday did not expect it. There was a social media storm. I I will be interested whenever we get to talk to him about sort of how he was influenced by that. Like what went into the decision to not actually leave. He entered the portal. You can always stay. Um, Lauren Gustin, is that you? Like, we just had this uh, with Lauren Gustin as well. Um, and uh, it's, it's great. Cody Epps is a really good receiver. This one hurt when he entered yeah. the portal. It's like, oh, Cody had a really nice start to, like, when he finally was involved in the offense, he was a big piece. 39 catches, 459 yards, six touchdowns. As I highlighted the last couple of days and during the season, the dude went off against Notre Dame and Arkansas. I would argue those were two of the top three toughest opponents on the schedule with Oregon, where, okay, you got to show up in this game, and he was fantastic. He went for 100-plus in those games. He scored three touchdowns total. He was juking guys against Notre Dame right here, okay? Uh, his touchdown the goal line as well, as well was amazing. The arrow route. His upside is so good. Like, he could be... Um, a draft pick from BYU in the next year or two. Like, he has massive potential. I still don't know how BYU got him out of high school uh, playing with Bryce Young on this amazing <laughs> Matter Day team. Like, so awesome that he is coming back because now BYU can continue to add around the big three at receiver. Yes. Certainly got a commitment yesterday. As soon as that's official, we can mention, uh, you know, his name. Um, but BYU added yesterday. I hope they add a couple more. Aaron Roderick said they have several scholarships available yeah, yes. uh, after spring ball. So we'll see how many they use there. But this is fantastic news. So obviously Keaton Slovis' tweet last night of Elder <laughs> is because he is probably told by he's coming, Cody he's, coming, he's back. coming back. He's coming back. And he's back. excited. That's a nickname that he has for Cody. Neither Keaton nor Cody are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but they understand the culture and the verbiage. and Yeah, that. for so, sure. Yeah, they get along. This is a playoff of Cody's tweet on March 2nd, which said he was called to serve in the Provo, Utah, Lavelle Edwards Stadium mission beginning on September 2nd. Many are called, but fewer chosen, Spence. Holy he, cow. He's one of the chosen ones that received. What a wild 24 hours. BYU Twitter in general was out of control yesterday. Keaton Slovis was the initial lightning strike in the dry field of hay that lit the fire. But then BYU basketball coaches are tweeting out all types of like cougar growls and it just was, it was crazy. But when that elder tweet surfaced, my initial reaction was, I think he's calling out for Cody. Like, where are you? And it happened to be, we think now, hey, you're back. He's coming back. That was, that was a hint. I, I got really excited as soon as I saw that tweet. In fact, um, I, I was at a cool event with the Manuia Foundation who helps basically Polynesian kids with admissions and financial aids, uh, aid to college. And one of the, like, grandparents there was like, hey, did you see Keaton Slopes' tweet? And, like, wanted to talk about it. I was like, I did, I did. He's like, what do you think it means? I'm like, maybe Cody Epps coming back, uh, which would be really exciting. It's like he never left. Um, but he certainly had massive opportunity um, to go yeah. to SEC yes. schools. Yes. To you, you'd think, like, USC, Tennessee, LSU, or, uh, you know, Ole Miss, and, and so on and so forth were some of the big names coming after him. This is a big get for BYU to keep him. Remember... The commitment between a school and a player really is year to year at this point because you can transfer without penalty and not sit out and play in NIL and dot, dot, dot. The fact that BYU could keep Cody is significant. So riddle me this. I know you know more info than I do on, on this from yesterday. What, from what you've learned, was money a factor? Did BYU re-up and pay him a ton to keep him? Okay, well, first of all... The that's, Royal Blue Collective, that's, that's, specifically. That's a loaded question, for sure. And I like that he pointed out in his message, I did not use the portal as a way to leverage in any way. He could have, and it would have been understandable. Okay, so it is my understanding that Cody Epps is coming back to BYU having not leveraged anything and gotten more money Zero out of the Royal dollars. Blue Collective. He was already given, what we were told, a nice deal. Yes, a I would... Nice 
NIL deal. So I was told a couple days ago that to keep him this year, there was some re-upping. Yes. Okay, and then they felt like they were good. But that was not leveraged to keep him no, in this situation. No, he is not okay. getting additional because of his decision to go into the portal and saying, okay, well, now I need a little bit more. Yeah. That was never part of it. And people say, well, Lauren Gustin did that. Why didn't Cody Epps do that? Two, two totally different situations. Lauren has her degree, Jerem. Yes. She's, she's a grad transfer. Also, let's, let's be honest. The, the sort of, uh, unfortunately, this is the case, but it's straight up, the investment in certain sports and, and whatnot is different with financial values. We'd love to act like everyone's getting the same amount of money for every sport, but that's not the case. But Lauren Gustin, you could argue, is the face of women's sports at BYU. She's a big deal. Absolutely. And big deal. given her situation, like I feel it, it's it hurt when we heard that Lauren Gustin wanted to go somewhere else potentially. Oh, yeah. But I understood that she's been at BYU for more than three years. She's done great work here. She got her degree. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of players take that final year and they want to do something different. Yeah. And she was going to get paid elsewhere. Well, that's when the Royal Blue Collective showed up and was like, no, no, no. We, we want you here for your final year as BYU goes into the Big 12. And they are doing as much as they possibly can yes. right now. Like, yes. like shout out to Royal Blue Connect, uh, uh, Collective, shout out to Ku Connect, shout out to all the collectives who are trying to help these players in this space. Is it the kind of money that you've seen thrown out there? It is not at that level, mm -hmm. right? But BYU is a special place and there are reasons to be at BYU that have nothing to do with dollar signs and then everything to do with your life while you're a student here and, and after. And this place connects you um, in a way that not many other places do. Yes. And set you up and create a community. Yeah. Ask a lot of BYU players who have come to BYU, and it's like, this isn't just a place where you go to school. Like, yeah. this is a place where you can call home for the rest of your, your life. And, and I think Cody Epps senses, and he's told us as much out loud, us being the public, what this place is and what it means and why he likes it. And it's cool to see that he's going to stay. He certainly could have gone elsewhere and been happy and had a great football career. But it's awesome that Cody Epps is going to yes. stay here because he is a special receiver. Something else to bring up here. I think Cody Epps certainly felt welcomed at BYU, clearly from his statement. Yes. But I don't think he understood what he meant to the BYU fan base until he went into the port. Like, truly meant to this fan base. The reaction showed you a lot. That absolutely played a factor in some of this like seeing just it blow up like oh no 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 this can't be right this can't and I know people were upset but as we pointed out yesterday they're upset because Cody Epps is awesome because they like him he's a great person and he's a great football player and they want him at BYU he's a yep. great ambassador for BYU uh, yes for, and let's outline those reasons uh which are obvious listen he is a, a black athlete who's not a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who loves BYU that's fantastic. We would love to continue to evolve in BYU's, um, you know, diversity of not only religion, uh, but of race. And it's been great to have different kinds of people from all walks of life come together for a common cause, which happens to be sports and academics. So this is great. I think Cody Epps is a tremendous ambassador for what BYU can become. Traditionally, it's been one thing that is changing. Can we just rewind to how we all felt on Sunday night? <laughs> we thought, oh my gosh, Cody Epps is in the portal. BYU now needs a wealth of help in the wide receiver room. And BYU... Still do. Yes, they, they need some help there, but it feels but a less. lot It feels a lot better. And there are other parts moving that we can't discuss yet because yes. certain... One commitment already plus others. People have not gone public through the university with it. It hasn't become official through BYU and through the sports information department when it does now BYU is going to have Epps back and somebody else who we think is going to make a nice impact for Fessy Sataki so now maybe and it's there just, may be others yeah as well one, one now one more maybe two more like but the wide receiver I, room I still want two more compared to Sunday yeah. <laughs> how feeling now it's plus worlds it's apart plus two and sort of like proven dudes yes. it'll go from two to yes. four um, I would still like to walk in with five or six dudes in the uh, fall. All right, our question of the day, not surprisingly. What's your reaction to Cody Epps' decision to hop back out of the portal and stay at BYU? At Carson underscore Stemmons on Instagram says, wait, what? Yeah, I think that's how a lot of people are feeling.
Joe Weed on Twitter says, it's always great when your favorite missionaries don't get transferred. <laughs> uh, Hype Train Podcast tweeted, Elder! And it's a picture of uh, Keaton and Cody in suits and <laughs> name tags. So <laughs> there you go. Hashtag BYUSN on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Cody Epps staying at BYU. That's, uh, that's awesome. Wow. Okay, BYU softball has a doubleheader Friday against Pacific starting at 7 Eastern on the BYU TV app. If you like home runs, come check out the Cougs. Also on the way, there's no better combination than BYU football and the name of Kafusi. Former NFL and BYU defensive lineman Bronson Kafusi in studio to discuss Cody Epps and the transfer portal era in college football. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Does your dream of home ownership feel impossible? At Mountain America, we want to remind you, the dream is alive. We are here to craft a personalized mortgage loan based on your needs. You can live your dream. And now, for a limited time, receive a free appraisal. Our one-on-one -on -one guidance and quick application process will bring your dream to life. Reach out to a Mountain America mortgage expert today. My name is Spencer Finnegan. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart, Mary. And there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships. I found the replenishment grant, and my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future. Today was a great day. You're gonna feel the energy of all these volunteers. I'm excited to get out into the world and see who else is making good. And you're going to meet some of the most amazing people. And we will all just lift each other up. What we do is we create memories for families. And you realize just how good people are. It does take a village. It's definitely been a journey. Oh, what a great day to be a cook. It always is, but today is a great day. Follow BYU Sports Nation on social media for the latest and greatest, like Cody Epps coming back to BYU. What? On Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. He is Jerem. I am Spencer. Let's call an audible of our own here, like Cody. And whip it! Cougar Whip Round presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. ESPN writers made a list of winners and losers from the NFL draft. They had Tyler Algier as one of the losers because of the Falcons pick of Bijan Robinson. Do you agree? This is a an interesting question because I feel like the Falcons get better for sure, and they are a run-heavy offense by design. So yeah, it takes away some carries from Tyler, but it helps the Falcons offense and it's gonna help them win more games. So the dynamic duo is fun, but yeah, Tyler's not going to have the gaudy numbers that he put up last year. So, loser in that regard, but hopefully this makes the Falcons a winning football team and helps their run-heavy offense. I have a hard time calling any of our dudes a yeah, loser. Yeah. Uh, Tyler Algier is still, hey, yes, he loses carries and certain opportunities there, but maybe the tread on those tires stays a little better so more, that later in the season yeah. and later in his career, he's good to go. The schedule for the expanded college football playoff was released yesterday. So, Jerem, simply, uh, which day do you expect BYU to start playing in the playoff? Friday, December 20th, 2024. That'll be uh, the first game, I believe, BYU will be hosting a home game that night. Hosting a game. So they'll be in two years. Uh, an eight seed or better. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. Between a five and they'll an eight They'll be eight a seed. five and an eight seed. Probably <laughs> an eight. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go with Oh, the my eight. gosh. Um, but, but seriously, it's Friday, Saturday on those first round games on campus. Quarterfinals are Fiesta, Peach, 
sugar on a Tuesday, Wednesday, and then the semis are Thursday, Friday, the championships on a Monday. Well, they have like one game on a Saturday. Is that okay with you? Like the weekday games? I do not care. It I don't will, care it either. It will dominate. I, it'll be great. Nights. In fact, college basketball probably hates this the most because like they're kind of lost in the fray anyway behind college football well, in December. The now, regular bowl games just, you know, December 20th and 21st, that'd be fun. I and love it. One game on a Friday, three games on a Saturday on December 21st. That's better, because other bowl games we've been watching, not as compelling. Yeah, uh, so get your Christmas shopping done before December 20th and December 21st, so you can save yourselves with your spouses. <laughs> we need to have it all done, because then you, then it's all football on the 20th and 21st. Okay, BYU Sports Twitter, again, that's in 24. That's this fall, but yeah. next year. Yeah. Uh, BYU Sports Twitter has been a crazy place for the last uh, you know, 12, 24 hours. Hunter Miller tweeted a photo of Festitake's head photoshopped on the Flex Field guy's head, <laughs> and slapping in eyeball emoji tweet over Cody Epps is transferring, which now is not the same kind of news, right? Is there anything that eyeball emojis can't fix? Because that's like BYU football's calling card. Only when the eyeball emoji isn't worthy of an eyeball emoji. Wait, do they ever use it in vain? I don't think I that feel B like they I always think use that BYU it. BYU does good does it when in vain, but there are other programs or other things that happen with like oh eyeballs. It's like, oh, what is this? And then the news is kind of disappointing. It kind of goes back to one of your number one pet peeves, which is like, we've got a huge announcement don't annou coming up. Don't announce it enough. Just that, just announce it, <laughs> and then we react. Granted, had we said that, hey, we've got some huge news off the top of the show for BYU fans. Cody Epps probably would have fit that, but still. Like but it, people go be higher, careful, right? You they go, whoa, careful. one hour church? You so, know, it's just like, no, it's Cody Epps transfer. The eyeball emojis really started to gain traction when BYU was scheduling games amidst the whole COVID chaos, right? Like, yeah. That's when it really, like, took off. Like, eyeball, but eyeballs the eyeball, are when they got But a game. Troy does not deserve eyeball emojis. No, Coastal Carolina does, though, right? And that was In fun. In hindsight, does it? <laughs> Given the situation, game day, all that stuff. I know. I know. The BYU's game day, though. Just make sure that the eyeball emoji is worthy of being placed out there on social media. Yeah, congrats. Is that essentially Come saying, away. like, I've got some big news that I know and you don't, right? you got to be careful with that a little bit. All right. On to BYU men's golf once again. Yesterday, Zach Jones and Todd Miller were fantastic. They joined the show, told us about what really was a photo finish of sorts on the golf course to win the West Coast Conference Team Championship and, of course, Zach winning the individual medalist honors. They did mention that it took a Max Brenchley 90-foot eagle putt yep. to help them rally and eventually win as a team. That looked and sounded like this. really like it. Come on, do it to us. Do it to us. Yeah! <laughs> An eagle from 90 feet. It's amazing. Yeah, I liked it too. Yeah, this looks good. Look do good. it to us. Do it. <laughs> Summoning the golf gods. On a scale of one to Jimmer, how clutch was that putt from Max Brinsley? It was pretty close. Like, if that was to win the individual and or team championship, that would be like the highest level of that. Yes. But a 90-foot eagle putt, especially when they'd had two double bogeys. On a par five. On a par five where, hey, you got to go in and at least birdie that baby. They went Let's down go. five strokes because of those two double bogeys in the team competition. They needed that eagle. That and sparked the comeback. Max Brenchley coming up big, man. And it broke four times, we learned. Max is a How top. do you even read that? He's a top five finisher, too. Yeah. Max a, was one off the medalist. We, we saw him tee off in person last year at the uh, CST tournament. Special play. Holy crap. Special player. That guy launched it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Many MLB teams have introduced a home run prop. My favorite, of course, is the Mariners Trident, which is super heavy, apparently. Okay. The Reds Viking helmet and the latest Nationals powdered wig. <laughs> what should BYU baseball or softball's home run prop be? This is an easy answer, Jerem. It needs to be a Brigham beard. <laughs> you just put on a Brigham <laughs> just beard? put on one of those cheap Halloween <laughs> Brigham beards. <laughs> <That's laughs> Renzel Snow <laughs> and Brigham Young. Are you kidding me? You cross home plate and your, your buddies hand you the Brigham beard you throw on like, yeah! Mine would be, you put on a Cosmo head and you're like holding a cougar tail. You're just going to take a big old bite of a cougar tail. Yeah! I love that. <laughs> Why? Okay, it's now up to you, BYU Baseball. Your, Make it happen. Your, Make it happen. your turn. Your play. 
<laughs> it's the beard or Cosmo's head and a cougar tail. It's just getting weird no matter what. It's just getting weird. Oh, I love it. Yesterday, new BYU football radio analyst, friend of the program, Hans Olsen, tweeted out the following picture of a massive and extremely delicious barbecue spread. Jerem, could we finish this collectively together? Because yeah. he said, I'll give you two hours in a quiet, cool room with a drink of your choice. Could you finish this? Could we do it together? There's no way. No, that's way too much food. I, d I don't think you and I could put away one of those. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> no, we need like four to six people. Oh. I don't have the hunger and the palate that I used man, to. Man, oh man. Like maybe you and I on our missions, <laughs> walking around all day. Yeah. But no way, dude. I'll give us one. Like, we're we, similar we, with physique as well. We need like a Harris Lachance with us. We would go into this having prepared adequately so that we're starving. I, we could take care of one tray. We could do one. We could take care of one tray. Okay, one. I don't is. think we it's could finish lot, both of those. No way. An individual no. finishing both of those? No. no. Oh like, my goodness. Like if you were like Blake Freeland. Joey bit, Chestnut! <laughs> <laughs> that guy, all-time champion. Let's go. Oh my goodness! No, you or I need about a hundred something extra pounds to like <laughs> get to that place. And well, uh, if we ate that, we probably would. A stretched-out stomach, right? We 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 need the capacity. People for typically that. are going the other direction. Yeah. My goodness, it looks delicious though. I'm starving now. I know. I'm really hungry. Uh, calling Cam True from Bam Bam's Barbecue. We will be there. Where you at, bro? <laughs> <laughs> you there, Cam? All right, as promised, up next, Bronson Kafusi is in Studio B, the former BYU and NFL defensive lineman and basketball player. He's going to discuss the transfer portal for both sports, including the news of Cody Epps returning to Provo. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. BYU, we believe wholeheartedly in expanding joy, and that joy comes from learning and serving. Some of the best, most lasting learning happens when we serve, when we experience, when we connect in real, lasting ways. It's what we call inspiring learning, learning that inspires us to create a better world, to do and be better. After all, light shared is the best kind of light. Mark? Some of my favorite moments are hearing from the family room, just a chorus of laughter. Twas your mother's. BYU TV has been an escape and a refuge for me. We forgot about random acts. We love that one. Today, we wanted to do something nice for you. I see that change in him after that show. It just brightened everybody's day. I can do this. I want to live my life in a way that that show showed me. Bronson Kafusi, he has just been dominant. Fact! Bronson Kafusi! Kafusi's playing like a madman. Is hit! The ball's loose and... Ball forward for the lead. There's Bronson, got oh. it! How about that catch? Welcome back to BYU Sports Station. We're live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton. He is Jerem Jordan. Listen, we are super stoked about Cody Epps announcing that he's coming back to BYU. But I would also like a dominant defensive lineman to go after the quarterback. Somebody to get some sacks yes. like uh, you know, our next guest used to get him. 
who is Bronson Kafusi? Bronson, yeah. welcome to the show, What's man. Up, man? Hey, hey, doing good. Thanks for having me. Hey, it was fun to watch your highlight reel, including uh, a touchdown catch in the alumni game. Man. Yeah, look at that. Uh, <laughs> was there a two-point conversion too in there or something? Man? Something like yeah. that, right? Yeah. yeah. Did you yeah. miss your calling, not playing tight end at BYU? Well, it started that way, right? Yeah. Because yeah. that's what I offered as uh, from Coach and I back in the day. I was offered as a tight end, and so. I mean, kind of a full circle doing it in the NFL and then coming back and doing it. I mean, <laughs> it's always just been something I've always loved. So No one could guard you. <laughs> yeah, just throw it up. Right? In the alumni game? Yeah. I only went in on the red zone because I knew, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's where I'll yeah, succeed. Yeah, come on now. Come on now. <laughs> okay, so obviously the big news of the day, Cody Upp's coming back. Uh, mm -hmm. Jumps in the portal Sunday night, announces right when we go on the air. We appreciate that, Cody, uh, that he's coming back. What's your reaction to that? It's great. It's honestly great. Um, I kind of look at it from both sides of the, the picture where, I mean, guys, guys can get paid now. Yeah. And it changes the game. It truly does change the game. And there's going to be a lot of uh, moving pieces all the time. So uh, what's cool, though, is uh, everyone has to play it. So when people throw their name out, now uh, BYU can go after them. You know, it kind of creates an interesting uh, environment for everyone now. <laughs> I have mixed emotions about the transfer portal, which I'm guessing a lot of people do because it's great when it benefits your team and yeah. your program, but then situations arise where a Lauren Gustin can hop in and it's like, oh no, scramble, 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 and BYU is fortunate to get her back. And the same can be said about Cody Epps. It was just mad scramble and now he's back. So how do you view the transfer portal and how it's affecting college sports altogether? Are you, a, are you more of a fan or more of a detractor? <laughs> uh, for me, I'm definitely uh, more of a fan. And the reason is because it creates more opportunity and, uh, you know, options for the athletes. And I'm, I'm always, you know, one to side with the athletes and, uh, you know, what they can do now within it. It allows them to, to, to move and, uh, you know, gain some leverage somewhere. So it's, it, it's good. It does make it a challenge because it's year to year. Um, yeah. That idea of like, hey, we've got you, Bronson, for four years. is like, well, I have you for this year. And then hopefully you're here for next year. Um, if, if you were an athlete now, would it be hard to not want to explore what's in the portal, despite how much you loved BYU? Oh, yeah. Um, definitely. Because now you're able to earn... Uh, you know, NIL opportunities every year. And it could increase every year. Yeah. And it could come from all different angles. So now it's, it's, it's a completely different ball game. And for me, I would, I would definitely every year be looking at, okay, what are my opportunities? But also I think there needs to be, you know, transparency from the players. Yes. Especially yes. up front. Um, because that communication is key and you want your athletes to be able to, uh, you know, come and be like, hey, this is what I'm thinking. What do you think about this? This is what I'm being offered. This yeah. is what they're telling me. Yeah. Like, I'm interested in staying here. Do which, with this information what you will. Which, unless yeah. you're in the portal, um, is tampering. Uh, but, but everyone's doing it. Um, we'd like to think the BYU's not, um, you know, and, and hopefully dealing honestly, which BYU typically tries to do. But it can be a little messy, um, which is interesting. So the, in the transfer portal th this year, a lot of guys left after the season. I think Cougar Nation panicked a little bit. That was the sense on social media that we got. Yet BYU seems to have benefited uh, from a lot of guys. Uh, Keaton yeah. Slovis and Aiden Robbins, Eddie Heckard and Isaiah Banya and so on and so forth. Um, do you have a sense of which side of the ball may have benefited more in the portal this offseason for BYU? Man, that's a good question. Uh, for me, it... I kind of look at it where where are the gaps yeah and did we fill them and whatever side of the ball filled the gaps yeah that's who who won it's hard not to mind. focus on the quarterback when <laughs> exactly the quarterback that's what i was gonna gap, say right? yeah and running back and running back right yeah yeah i mean those are just two such prominent positions that it's hard to lean away from that but you are a defensive guy and so, along those lines, BYU... You, you played defense. I wouldn't call him defensive, though. Okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you play defense. You're a legend in that regard. <laughs> um, and I'm serious when I say I, w I would love for BYU to go out and find a guy yes. like you and or Corbin to come and be able to rush off the edge and create some havoc. 
Um, as you look at BYU's defense, clearly there was a need on the defensive line to go and, and get better. So what's what type of guy does BYU need to put on the edge? Like what, what will work in Jay Hill's scheme with four down linemen? Yeah, uh, you, you really want guys who create havoc with one-on-one -on -one okay. opportunities because, you know, with a four down front, you're going to be able to have one-on-one -on -one opportunities along the entire front. Uh huh. And so if you can have a person that consistently wins one-on-ones all the time, now we can scheme. So, okay, we want that player to be one-on-one -on -one with this guy. All right, well, then let's blitz here so the protection shifts, and now it's one-on-one. -on -one. So now we're going to give him the opportunity to get those sacks. And I felt like that was something that happened with me my senior year where, you know, I was able to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And then it's just, okay, it's on you to capitalize on it. And so for me, I, I knew before I even – I knew before the snap even went that I was going to have a one-on-one -on -one. <laughs> just because I knew the protection. I knew what we were doing up front. And I was like, oh, I got this guy by myself. Let's go beat him. I went through the sack numbers the other day, and I was like, oh, yeah, Brunson was really good. I knew this, but, like, looking at the numbers again, I was like, oh, six and a half, eight and a half. Da, da, da. Like, we've – BYU's previous scheme was – not necessarily to get those. It was to block it. It was to let the linebackers make plays and so on and so forth. Why? And now we feel like, uh, based on what Jay Hill said, more aggression, 4-3 front, more one-on-ones, right? Um, Utah has been really good at having great defensive linemen. BYU's had some good ones too, but they have been better at this. How does BYU get to the point where they're at that level? Pressure with four. NFL guys on the D-line, like yourself. Yeah, well, first it starts with uh, who you bring in. And, and then it just starts with the day in, day out grind of coaching them up. Um, that's why I'm really excited because I, I know the coaches that are coaching, you know, the front seven. And I, I know they're awesome and they're going to get guys rolling. But, I mean, everything starts up front in football. And so if you can have four guys up front that can get pressure, I mean, it's just a dream come true for the back end because now they can, they can you know, sit back and, um, that ball is going to be coming out probably, you know, not exactly where the quarterback wants it to all the time just because uh -huh. of that pressure. And we have an extra guy back there. And so it truly changes the game if you can get guys that can create pressure. And so, I mean, just getting them in and showing, hey, this is what we do. Creating that culture of if you have a one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. you're going to win it. So BYU needs to recruit better at that position essentially. Get more and better guys at that position. Well, yes, there, and then also we have great players right now that I know so what's are going to be dominating. Then? What's been missing? Yeah, no, that, that's a good question. Um, well, scheme changes everything. Yes. Okay. So because you have strengths as a defensive lineman and someone that's blitzing all the time or rushing the quarterback, and if, it doesn't, if your skills don't match the scheme, it makes it hard for you to shine and to make an impact. And so with this new scheme, people are going to be just blown away by the amount of pressure and, uh, you know, quarterback hurries, sacks that are going to be created because now these guys are going upfield first. Like their first thing is to attack. And that creates a lot of strengths or it plays off a lot of strengths for certain players. Like in my mind, I'm thinking I've known, you know, Tyler Batty forever. Yes. And I'm not like I was coaching him at BYU basketball camp when I was coaching when he was, when he was like in fifth grade or something. Yeah. And so I'm watching him. And I look at his strengths and I'm like, wow, he's so explosive. He's so he can, he can bend the edge. He has, you know, great, you know, hands. And it's like, wow, he's going to be someone that everyone needs to watch because he's going to just explode onto the scene just because the scheme is different. OK, so BYU's wit. Yeah. So in the past, BYU was. I wouldn't say passive, but it was like we would rather you take a 15-play drive and perhaps turn it over or uh, on downs or a penalty or something. That's the risk level we want. Is that accurate? And now it's, well, you may beat us over the top, but we're going to go for more havoc Yeah, quickly. I love that because, I mean, a, a saying that a lot of defensive players hear a lot of the time is pressure breaks pipes. And so it's like if we can pressure with less people, I mean, that creates more turnovers. And so that's why, the, I mean, it's going to be awesome to just see defense alignment just attacking mm. all game long. Yeah. And you're going to see a lot, a lot of plays made in the backfield. I believe the phrase from Jay Hill was to uh, Ciala Yacera, we're going to attack and let the big dogs eat. Let the okay. big dogs <laughs> eat, yeah. 
Okay, yeah. so you brought up Tyler Batty. Isaiah Banya, the transfer from Boise State, is we think going to be on the opposite edge. Um, and you talk about winning one on ones. How do you? What's the best way to prepare for that? You've done this in many camps, and you've been through the NFL, and and you've been through several different camps with teams. So, like, what are the things that that have to happen to help you develop those one on one skills? Yeah. Well, first thing is you have to create ownership of that. You know, I'm, I'm not just going out there and, hey, I got a one-on-one, -on -one, great. No, it's I have to win. Like, I will win this one-on-one -on -one right now. And they're going to come throughout the game. And so you can't ever slow down as a rusher because you only have maybe 20, 30, maybe 20 true rushes a game. And we just need you to win on one of them, two of them. Yeah. You know, and the rest, it might, there might be pressures or something. But, I mean, it's just having that mindset of I will win every one-on-one -on -one that I get. And I think that's huge. And then from there, it's just practicing the little details every day during practice, getting better, um, going up against the best player on the team during practice. That, that's who you want to go up against every single day. Um, because when you go out there you know, on game day, you're going up against their best. And so if you're always going up against someone that's maybe not our best, it actually doesn't transition. So uh, being able to have that mentality of I'm just going to work every day and I'm going to get better. And then when the game comes around, it's time to cut it loose. Like, that's the fun part. Like, it's like, OK, I got to do this live. And uh, I, I always I always look forward to that. Like, I know it's third down and long. I know what's coming. I get this guy one on one. <laughs> it's my time to eat. Let's, no, go. Let's go ahead and throw a Tyler Batty up against Kingsley Suamatai on the rag in practice, shall we? <laughs> yeah, every, every play. Every... <laughs> that's a fun matchup, right? <laughs> Um, and, and they may be on other, the other side. It depends where they put them. But um, when it comes to hoops, certainly the transfer portal, it's busy for BYU. Um, as a former BYU basketball player, what's your sense of kind of where the program is and what they're trying to add to be at least interesting in the Big 12, which would be a real challenge? Yeah, no, definitely. It, it will be a challenge. Uh, but I think it's, you know, a great opportunity for us to go in and just, you know, I mean, the pressure. Is there pressure? I, I don't know in basketball. What is the pressure is a good question. I don't, I don't yes. know. No, it's not to win the league. It's definitely not to be in the top four or five. It's to be bubblicious, to be in yeah, the be, hunt. Be, be considered for a tournament spot. To get year? a couple really nice wins, to pack the Marriott Center and, and challenge and win a few games that yeah. maybe people don't expect you to against some of the big guys. I love that. No, yeah. I love that. Like if I'm, on the, that. if I'm on the basketball team right now, I'm thinking, oh, I'm just going to go in and show them like we belong here. Like, and, and we, we are here to, you know, com to compete and we're going to, you know, never back down. And, and it's really a good time to come and show them, okay, hey, oh, yeah, we're, we're, yeah. we're here to stay. Like, Give me a sense of this. In the WCC, there was pressure to not mess up. Oh, we're at Pepperdine. We're supposed to win this game. Well, BYU went 6-6. Six and six. Like, it was tough. Now you never have a game like that in conference. You, in theory, could be an underdog in almost every game, home or road. Oh, I love that. What yeah. kind of uh, difference does that make for a player where the pressure isn't, hey, you have to win this game because they're not that good on paper, whereas it's like, well, actually, this team's in the top 75 in all these metrics. Like, you shouldn't win that game. I feel like BYU is a better underdog than favorite. I don't know what it is or why, but that BYU typically operates this way. I love that because it's like, let's get up for this game. Well, every BYU game. Every, like, game. We're every, game. every game. Let's get it's, up for this game. It's all every St. Game. Mary's and Gonzaga yeah. type games. I love that. Like, I, I, I think just because of that, we're going to thrive a lot more than what people think, which is a great place to be, you know, honestly. <laughs> it really is. All right, before you go, we need to ask you uh, to get the update on Corbin. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 So how how are things going with Corbin in his professional career as he plays in the USFL and it's a new adventure? What's what are things like for Corbin? Oh, man. Yeah, he's playing this year and, uh, you know, really doing a good job. Last who's, year, who's he with again? He's with the uh, the Memphis Showboats. The Showboats. Memphis Showboats. And Troy Warner's there, too. Yeah, right? Troy's there. Very nice. Yeah. So he's hanging out with Troy a lot. Um, it's going really well. It's, it's just cool to see how, you know, last year when he was playing in the league, he was doing just an incredible job. You know, one of the best old linemen in the whole league as far as pass protection, all these different ratings. Catching passes. Yeah, catching passes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Running after. I was like, whoa. Uh, but it was, it was just so cool to see him, like, coming into his own, really 
you know, being able to play that position at a high level now. And so I'm, I, I'm excited for him. Um, and I love watching him play because it's like, wow, he's, he's just one of those freak athletes. It's yeah. like, like you're looking at my TV, you're like, oh yeah, he's pretty big. But then you see him in person, it's like, oh my gosh, this guy is. Just <laughs> and you're huge. saying that? Yeah. No, I'm saying that. Yeah. You look up to your little no, brother. Seriously. Right? <laughs> yes. Yes. No, I do, and it's 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 so crazy he's to a me. Giant. I, I don't I don't mess with them anymore. You know, we're not we're not wrestling. I'm not. I, I know what fights to pick. You know, it's like I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> yeah. Like, Devin, he, come here. I thought, he was, I thought he was going to become a professional bodybuilder. He right? could do, yeah, that or he, he wants to do boxing now. He so. wants to do boxing? <laughs> yeah, he does boxing too. Dude, so we'll do, have to go watch MMA? a fight. Like he would be the biggest dude in MMA. Yeah. Like, no, he probably would be really good at it. What honestly. is he, right? Like 6'10, 3, what? He's probably like 335 right now, Whew. which is like down from what he was at. He was like at 365 at one point. Wow. So when we were in New York together. So. Yeah, he's he's down, which is weird because like 335 is down. So, <laughs> yeah, you said it. Yeah, yeah. I'm already thinking of like potential boxing nicknames or MMA nicknames like Kafusi Kong. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's something like that. I like that one. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Hey, it's great to have you in studio, Bronson. Hey, we thanks. Appreciate the time. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. We appreciate go way it. back with Bronson, by the way. You, you were a wide-eyed freshman on the tip you basketball 14 and team. years young and we were doing <laughs> high school games when we were BYU students some fun memories there you they were they were back, fun man. good games <laughs> my call for sure that was a good yeah one. that was a good one yeah. <laughs> go look it up go look it up my call last second show oh man thanks Bronson yeah appreciate it okay baseball looks to bounce back in Southern California following last night's shutout to UC San Diego they take on San Diego not UC San Diego coming up 9 Eastern on the BYU radio app tomorrow night how many eyeball emojis did all of you see on Twitter yesterday? And how did those eyeball emojis make you feel? Knowing what you know now, this is BYU Sports Nation. The BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. Luxurious blanket. Getting cozy with family and friends. A gift for everyone. Minky Couture, official luxury blanket of BYU Athletics. Paul Brandt is laying his guitar aside and picking up a hammer. There actually are things that can be done to help people in situations like this. This is our <laughs> house for real. I don't think you can ever dream too much. As the receivers become the givers, they in turn help themselves. Watch Paul Brandt's Build It Forward on BYU TV or with the free app. <laughs> nice. Well done by our team. Uh, social media for the win. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We are live in Studio B. Our question of the day, how would you describe BYU Sports Twitter over the last 24 hours? 
And we've also asked, how are you responding to the news that Cody Epps is coming back? So you can respond to whatever you want. Jackson Watkins on Facebook says, we need Cody Epps. He was the best last year with Puka being out most games. Yeah, depending on the game, there were, there were a couple games where Keanu Hill was the guy. Chase uh, Roberts was the guy during the Baylor game. Chase, yeah, it was, it was Wyoming and Utah Tech. You know, they kind of changed uh, or took turns, if you will. But I love that, that trio. BYU's adding another one, if you saw on social media yesterday. And then hopefully there's a couple more. I would like at least two other kind of proven receivers in there. And then you've got a good young group uh, behind them. Um, and you go from there because you don't know how many years certain guys have based on COVID extra year or not, or do they transfer or do they, you know, go to the league if they're that good or whatnot. So, yes, uh, BYU's in a good spot now um, where if they can get two more kind of proven-ish yes. dudes, you walk into the Big 12 feeling pretty good. This is unbelievable because it, we've reached a point now where coaches have to recruit their guys constantly. Every year. And we say every year, like, it feels like, you know, Mark Pope said, sometimes I feel like I'm recruiting my guys on the daily. Yeah. Like, just to keep them okay. Yep. Um, in fall camp, if someone may want to bounce and just redshirt that year. Or after spring ball, there's obviously a 15-day window there, and, and mm -hmm. a lot of guys kind of left there. But BYU's done a, a good job of responding um, and getting some good transfers sure. in, in different areas uh, of the field, which has been great. All right, Calvin Wells on Twitter says, <clears throat> excuse me, my reaction, anybody that is as good of an ambassador as we can ask for in terms of Epps, okay, and a very good athlete, is very welcome back with open arms. Cody Epps' value is not just on the field. It is off the field as well. What he, uh, what he represents, what he means, who he is as a person, and that's why that one hurt, and that's why it feels especially good to have him back. All right, this one coming in on Instagram. I believe this is Nina Stett or Nine Stett, okay, saying, great news, the grass isn't greener, it's blue. Hey, there you go. And that's our elite voice of the day, presented by PAX yes, Healthcare Elevator. Yes, Elevate. indeed. But yeah, that, that's an elite response. I really like that. Okay, if you missed any shows, interviews, uh, games, Deep Blues, you can find them on BYUSN.com. Got all the on-demand content your, your blue heart could desire. Coming up, our rise and shout out. You know it's going to include another national championship team on campus. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. you use oh yes once upon a time the rest of the world is afraid of them boys we won't be i'm talking about having dreams you don't have dreams you don't have anything tonight we are the greatest hockey team this is your fight do you know how many guys can throw the ball 98 miles an hour not many it's time to start doing what you were meant to do. A hero always tells the truth, no matter what people think about him or what the consequences are. You have a chance to be loved. Make it. Just breathe. A life without love is no life at all. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. 
BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the free BYU TV and BYU Radio apps or listen to the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review. What a day to be a Coug. Cody Epson is back. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Let's give multiple. Let's go to uh, Cody Epps. Cody Epps for coming back. We said it earlier in the program if you missed it. Just a tremendous ambassador for this university. Um, Great to have him back. He's a really good player. He's a really good person. Would have rooted for him wherever he went, but glad that he's going to stay in pro. Yes, and we mean that genuinely. Yeah. Like, I had moved on emotionally where I was like, I love Cody. I'm super sad he's not going to be at BYU, but I will support him and root for him wherever he goes. Yeah, he's a good dude. I, I, he's going to have a, a great, successful life wherever yes. he goes, whatever he does. Amped, he's back at BYU. Yeah. And we also need to give a shout-out to BYU women's rugby again. Yeah, so they beat Stanford in the uh, D1A playoffs to win the West. They're going to the national championship game. Virginia beats Florida. Virginia opts not to go to the national championship game. Yes. Um, so BYU is being sent the trophy as the national champs. Congrats to the women's rugby team for the national title. So in rugby, the men go to the semifinal, play at Cal, uh, lose that one, but a great season. Then the women win the Western Conference in D1A playoffs and are essentially the national champion. So a great year in rugby at BYU. There's you a mentioned great... that you, the women are trying to jump up another level yes. as well. So D1 Elite is the next level, and uh, the hope uh, is that they will go to the next level next awesome. year. Jared Whippy, former BYU player, former local player with the Utah Warriors, he is the head coach first year, did a nice job uh, leading that team after Tom Waka did a tremendous job for a long time. Well, and again, this BYU rugby is in a different place. You can't recruit anybody. You can't go out like, like they, they used to they be They used able to be able to sort of offer financial aid in different no. ways, right? But now they can't. So it's whoever's here. And uh, given the rugby history, not only at the school, but in this state and in this community with Highland and United and Harriman now winning national championship recently, it's great to have uh, great rugby in these parts. Yeah, fantastic yeah. stuff. Wow, what a show. Uh, reminder to send in your tweets uh, in regard to Cody Epps, hashtag BYUSN, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram throughout the day. What a wild last 24 hours. And, again, we didn't even touch basketball. We didn't even talk about the assistant coaches who all tweeted out They're excited about Cougar, something, too. So, which, which would lead us to believe they signed somebody that they're very excited about. Are about to sign somebody. Um, it was everybody. It was Nick Robinson. It was Cahill Fennell and Cody Feger and Bobby Hordusky. Everybody but Mark Pope tweeted out some form of, like, celebration or cougar growl yesterday. Hey, it's, it's exciting right now. Obviously, players can leave. But how about Lauren Gustin and Cody Epps I love it. entering and returning in the last, what, week? I mean, that's been crazy, man. Wow. So you're telling me there's a chance. And there was. Two of the best on campus to stand here. Let's go. Our thanks to today's guest. Bronson Kafusi. Sorry to Dennis Petty, we ran out of time. Conversation continues 24 7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. This and all of our shows on demand, BYUSN.com. For Jeremiah, I'm Spencer. Shout out to Jim Laffin. We'll see you tomorrow on BYU Sports Nation. Go Cougs.